Hi everyone, so today we are going to do the fourth challenge, Viewer Jani from Islamabad's Android Application Exploitation Series. Uh, this was the second round, so let's get started. So as always, uh, we'll start with static analysis and then if required, we'll move to dynamic analysis. So I'm going to open the APK file using JRX GUI. In this case, we do not have to, you know, um, get the DEX file or the JAR file using D2 JDEX to JAR or anything else. So you know, it makes it easy to just um, go through APK without actually um, converting it to a JAR or DEX first. So now we have some native methods being called and then we can see that there are some buttons in the application, flag text, some fields, right, and then two strings. And then this is the native library, which it, which probably is including these methods, right? They are coming from here. So um, coming to the on click, we can see that, you know, when the application opens and um, uh, I'm not sure, I think when you click in, inside the view or something, or maybe, you know, uh, on default by on create just starts, right? And then it checks if the username length is less than or equal to zero and the password's length is less than or equal to zero, it is going to say, uh, try again, right? So, you know, just add something when you are doing it dynamically. So string u, string p is equal to main activity, this dot username edit text, get text dot to string. So it is, um, you know, this is the fields we are entering, right? So username and password, this is what we are entering into the application. And then JNI user is being fetched from this method from the native library, and then JNI pass is being fetched from it as well. Then we have user key and user IV. So user key and user IV are also being fetched from inside of it. So I think we might have to do dynamic analysis in this one. It's uh, kind of difficult to um, do everything using the dynamic one. So we are going to do that. So just going to see. So it is then calling this key decrypt method from here. So AES CBC cipher, some replacements, and then in the end we get um, you know user key dot bytes is converting into bytes, and then user IV uh, which it is fetching from here. JNI user and JNI pass is being uh, sent to this method here. We can actually also use debugging to see what is happening here, or we can you know just um, first let's take a look at dynamically right, and then uh, we'll use some objection magic or use Frida and see what these methods are returning or we can use RMS and then we'll move on to uh, other stuff if this doesn't work out right so this one was I think a higher level challenge of 400 points the maximum points there were so yeah let's um, let me open any motion and we are going to install the application uh, I think it might be already installed but I'm not sure which version it is so we are just going to uninstall that and install this one again so maybe all your JNI. I guess it is loaded. Almost. That is why I do not like doing dynamic analysis, uh, you know, making videos. So it takes some time for any motion to start and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Um, now we are going to move uh, and install this one. And we are going to install it again. All right. There we go. So it be installed. And we should have the APK in here. There we go. So username, password, we don't get anything. The first thing I'm going to do is use JNI trace and actually see what these uh, what this library is returning. So I'll just fetch the name of the library, um, lib native dash libso. So we can we can actually do that, right? So JNI trace, I think it was dash l lib native lib dot so, and then you have to pass the exam the package name or the application name. Um, uh, we need to start Frida before that. Mm, there we go and there we go it is hooked now so when i enter something it is going to uh, so what jna trace is uh, you can install with this with pip3 or pip2 what it does it it checks the native library and um it you know hooks it and see what methods are being called what are they returning it doesn't check the arguments being passed to methods uh, from what i have seen but uh this is what it does right so we could see the method name from here String from JNI user, string from JNI user key, password. So you can see that we get the username and password which were being passed to the application before, right? So this is the username, this is the password, and I'm guessing that they are AES encrypted and then base64 encoded. So probably um, we won't have any luck decoding them, right? Uh, we'll have to use that decrypt method, which is um, which also I issue. We'll we'll see that afterward. So this is the base64 one. So um, we don't we don't get much information in here. Uh, we do get the JNI user key, and then we get the user IV as well. So maybe we can try an AES decrypted, right? Uh, maybe that will work. So let's try that, and then we'll move on. So um, even if we do decrypt it, you can see that you know they have added some replace replacement, right? They are I think probably replacing 
this is regex replace car 28 i'm not sure what uh, that is in ascii and you know it's just replacing that so we are just going to try it i uh, i think it won't work out but you know just let's just try it anyways so this would be utf8 and then our key iv would be utf8 as well the input is raw and we don't get anything right even it even even though it decrypted it fine uh, we don't get anything so are there any methods nope we just have these four to work with now um what we can do is actually use debugging to see what are the values being set here right so that that will make our life like really easier right and uh, for that we have to first check if the application is debuggable and we can see here is that android debuggable is equal to true so yeah let's get started the first thing i'm going to do is check the port adb kd i think right so i'm going to close the application we're going to see if oh, just a second if one port decreases right and then we'll open that again right two eight double three 3017 uh, this is probably the there's one and then we are going to forward this port so we can attach JDB locally to it so that would be ADB forward um, I guess you add TCP the port you want to use so that would be 50321 in my case and then JWP the port in Jenny motion right and then we can attach to it using JDB dash attach localhost and the port we just forwarded and there we go we are attached to it so um i think you can use class or stuff right to check check um the classes of this package so i'm going to copy this and find out the classes of this right so class so it'll um probably give us a lot of packages in the start um i think that's what happens but uh gradually we'll have everything so um an article which i would recommend you all to read that would be um applications infosec institute right so these this this article uh, i don't think to this end bug one but this with this one article like really great it was using jdb i guess oh yeah this one is so um we're going to check the class first right so you can actually get that from classes i guess oh that's cool and then we are going to find it so it it takes some time but we already know what classes we have right but um you know just just remember the starting that is c so these are all in sequence so yeah there we go we have two um, activities or classes here which we are going to work with so i'm just going to create a um, file here to you know just note everything right i'm going to move this a little bit down there we go and then the next thing we're going to do is find the methods of these classes right so in this case what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a breakpoint on this on create um method right i'm not going to set up breakpoint on this hex or string or a key decrypt we can do that as well but what i want to do is you know set a breakpoint on this so for doing that you have to uh intercept or add a breakpoint on this method right so this method would return uh other this class would return these methods key decrypt hex or string but when you do breakpoint on this or when you list the methods of this you'll see that it, it'll have on create and something else right so we'll we'll work with that so the first thing I'm going to do, I think it's methods, right? And then you pass the class name. So if we add main activity here, um, again, we have to scroll a bit. It should be, should be, should be, should be here. Okay, let me add lots of spaces. So we just know that we are not actually going again. Input. I think it's, in, in case of methods, it's always on the top. And yeah, there it is. So this is the methods list. I'm just going to paste that here as well. There we go and then i'm going to list the methods of dollar one activity right so that would be dollar one here right there we go so these two so you see this on click um um we have on click on create so uh i don't think so it was on create it was on click so yeah we are going to we're going to work with this so yep copy this and i think it is stop in uh, you can also actually use the article. It has all the commands. I basically followed this one. So yeah, it's on click. Yeah. So, you know, just stop in. You have to copy um, this and add, add a dot, right? We're at a space. You need to add a dot. And there we go. It's at the breakpoint. So now let me full screen it. And when you add something in air, right, the, the breakpoint got hit, right? So now I'm going to list the variables which are being set. You know, just keep doing next locals i wish there was a good way you can actually use uh, vs code or something but the issue with vs code or uh, android studio is that you cannot debug each um 
you know, when you decompile the code, you have to pass to it, and when you try and um, debug it, you cannot do it because the lines are not in sequence, right? So that is why we cannot debug it uh, well. You have to add breakpoints um, at random places, and maybe if you're lucky, uh, some breakpoint will hit, right? Okay, so next, because you can see that U and P are what we entered, right? So I'm going to add some more sequence here. Right. Uh, I think when you do this, you don't have to. Okay, so it, that was in GDB. So in this case, you have to enter it again. So we get the user key, user IV, user and password, which we fetched from JNA trace before. So next, next, locals. And we get the D username and D password, which are being fetched from where? Uh, so it is being decrypted user key dot get bytes and it is it is the username and password which you know we have here which is page 64 encoded so this is the clear text so if we try and you know just enter it in here um, most probably we'll get the flag so since our breakpoint is hit uh, the application is stopped right now so we have to you know continue it so b before doing that I'm just going to you know look at all the variables being set next locals I don't see anything being updated yeah so steps completed. And yeah, so I think we can just let the application run now. We have what we need. We need this user and pass office. So the application, uh, because I think there was a really long delay, it exited. So we, we can just reopen it and add the user and password in there. So that is ISP user and then pass of ISP or Islamabad. And then there we go. We got the first flag of the challenge. So I'm going to create a file in here. More blocks. There we go. All right. So we got the first flag, but what about the other ones, right? Um, like if you can see that fu dot equals username password. So this is actually the first flag which is being displayed here. Uh, but yeah, that's it. We are only getting one flag. Uh, what about the others? So I guess for that you have to actually analyze the application itself. Um, probably we cannot, you know, um, fetch it from here. So string from general flag, and then it is being decrypted and being displayed here. So now let's move on to um, dynamic analysis uh, or actually using Hydra to you know see the files just before doing that I'm going to take a look at strings if there's you know anything interesting um, so far I don't see anything okay so nothing right now our last resort is probably this uh, native binary so let's get started I'm going to first do jetx and then take out the files I'm going to close the classes file we don't need it anymore right and come in here, it's already decompiled. Viewer JNI, resources, lib x86. And there's the binary. So I'm going to use Hydra to actually analyze this. So let's um, do that. FM dot. And then I'm just going to drag it in here. Right. Lib native. It's some binary is always already there. So I'm you know just going to delete both of these. I think these are from the finals. We'll probably do that soon as well. So just going to import that. And then we are going to analyze it. Okay. Lip native has not been analyzed. Yep, we want to analyze it. Analyze and then let's uh it is going to take a little bit of time for the functions to appear. Um you can actually list those already, but you know it takes some time to um to beautify it or whatever. So first thing we are going to do is, you know, take a look at what are the methods which are not being declared, uh, which are being declared here, but you know, not being utilized or anything. So you know, we we are going to take a look at that. Um, I think we should go in a sequence. So JNI IV. So we have some IV in here, and then the string. So you know, a lot of basic for encoded stuff in here. So let's try and move this. Is sixty four, and then it is you know encrypted. Uh, not encrypted. You can you know pass it as I uh, basic for encoded as you know IV. So this is our key, and we can pass this as well. So JNI IV JNI key JNI flag. So this is in most of the cases interesting thing which we always uh, find. So this is the second thing from JNI password. I think this is uh, no. We had the username password, username and user password. Right? We didn't have JNI password. I guess. Let me take a look at it here. Yeah, so we have JNI username, JNI password. We don't have G. Oh, it is. Yeah, it is actually the same. <laughs> it is the same. 
So just going to go with this from here into there, right? Just open it up and everything here is encrypted or encoded. But you can see that there is this interesting method here, second flag, right? And that's so cool. You can see that it is a hex encoded string and if we try and code it, we'll probably get the flag. So there we go, we've got the second flag of viewer JNI of Islamabad. Where is the flag file? There we go, we've got the second flag in here as well. Now we are going to move forward and look at this method. It says third and it has the flag in clear text. So we didn't have much in this case, right? We didn't have to analyze stuff and anything. So the first flag was what we uh, had to work on, but the second and third were pretty simple. So yeah, that's it. See you in the next one. Thank you.